Welcome back to Winter Day 17 of the Stardew Valley Min-Max and 100% Perfection Guide. Last time, we attended the Winter Night Market Festival, which we will be attending again today for its last day in town. Before we do that, though, we will be focusing on the wizard, as not only today is his birthday, but we have a special orders board quest to complete for him. And you'll notice we are already off to an unusual start. Usually when we wake up, we organize our stuff, do some farm chores and cycling, but not today. The special orders board quest that we have to complete is to find a prismatic jelly, which is only dropped by the very, very rare prismatic slime. While the special orders prismatic jelly quest is active, every slime in Skull Cavern or the Mind has a 1.2% chance to be replaced with a prismatic slime, and this chance is increased with daily luck, so we are lucky with a super luck day, if you noticed earlier, but you will notice that I did come straight to the mines because it does take quite a few tries to get one early on. Sometimes when I was doing this, I was grinding all the way to 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., so I decided I would just keep restarting until I got one before around 7.30 or 8 a.m. Because I don't want to waste too much time on this. I want to save as much time as I can. And you can already see here we've spent a good hour almost and we still haven't found one. That's how rare they are. But this challenge can be made slightly easier by using the elevator strategy, which I am here by continuing to go to the same floor, similar to what we do for grinding enemies in the mines. We just keep going to floor five here, and I choose floor five because there are often just regular old slimes here that spawn on this floor, and there's a 1.2% chance, a little bit increased with our daily luck, that any of those slimes will be a prismatic slime. And as you can see, we are not getting too lucky here, but our luck has changed right here with the prismatic slime and when you see it you'll know it because it is a changing rainbow color so you'll see this one right here drops us to prismatic jelly I think that is due to the burglars ring there we got an extra drop so we only need to give the wizard one of those I don't know what we would do with the other prismatic jelly I guess just keep it as a trophy but we have completed that and I definitely recommend completing the special orders quest very early on in the day, unless you're already grinding slimes on the mines for any reason, but it is good to do early in the day so you can just restart the day if you need to and not lose too much time by restarting the day. The most optimal way to do this time saving would be to restart the day every time we didn't find the prismatic slime on the first floor but that would take way too long because we would just wake up, go straight to the mines, check floor five, see if there's a prismatic slime, and then restart the day. So I think my strategy is okay. We've only spent two hours of the day, so it's not too bad. And we can move on with the day now. We've got that complete. We'll give that to the wizard while we give him our birthday gift, and it'll be all good. After that, we arrive back at the farm, and it is time to take care of our farm chores, which we will skip over some organization, then head down to the bottom of the farm here where our fish ponds are, and harvest the row from these. We finally got a sturgeon row, so we will go ahead and start processing that in a preserve jar, which will turn it into caviar, which we will need a caviar and aged row for shipping everything, but the caviar in specific is needed in the missing bundle, and then after this, we will plant a ancient seed in the greenhouse. Then we will skip over petting the animals and grabbing some animal products, which we will drop off in the chest here, then skip over some organization. We'll then craft some new chests as we are getting pretty full on our storage system here. We will make one of these chests for artifacts. This one right here, we'll color it black. And then this one will color purple for gems, and then we will grab all of the artifacts and place them in our new artifacts chest. Before we head out, we do grab a iridium tier mushroom for the wizard's birthday, and then I'll craft some tappers because the kegs and tappers are ready today, so we will have to cycle those. 
And finally, we'll grab some of our wild bait and craft a little bit more because we will be doing the deep sea fishing trip tonight, so we will use some wild bait there perhaps if we want to. It's good to have just in case. And then I will start harvesting these tappers right here and then head up to the mine carts to travel to the mines. We will first get our chest organized here because I did leave quite a bit of items in this chest right here. We will grab the iridium rod for fishing later as well as the seafoam pudding and some other items we want to take back to the farm with us. Then after we finish getting that chest organized we can head on over to our tree farm up here by the railroad and spa and start harvesting all of our tappers here. We do have our oak resin and some of the pine tar tappers ready and we do have 10 new tappers to place. It could be argued I should have saved my wood for kegs rather than using it on tappers here, but I only crafted 10 to fill the rest of the trees here, or at least most of them for that matter. And we do have quite a bit of wood now. Remember we did buy quite a bit from Robin, so we should have plenty of wood to use up all of our oak resin to turn into kegs. Now after tending to the tree farm here, we do take a shortcut to get to the wizard's tower, but first we'll make a little bit of a detour on the way as well because we do need to catch a void salmon, so we will do that real quick here. I do believe the void salmon is one of the only things that can be caught in this pond, so it should be one right off the bat here. It's not too difficult to catch as you can see here, especially with our fishing level. And there we go, we get a void salmon. Don't have to worry about that. It is a gold star quality, so we can use that in the missing bundle, which is nice. And now we will head on over to the wizard's tower. We do have three objectives that we have completed for the wizard here. The first was a bulletin board quest, so we'll fulfill that by talking to him here. It was slaying two squid kids in the mine, so we just fulfilled that. Then there is the Prismatic Jelly quest, which we completed this morning, and then it is his birthday today, so we do have an Iridium quality purple mushroom for him, which is a loved gift. And finally, we will hand him that Prismatic Jelly to fulfill that special orders quest, and that will unlock us the recipe for the Monster Musk, which may come in handy in the future. We should have quite a bit of friendship points with the wizard here, especially from that birthday gift we gave him. A loved gift is worth 640 friendship points, and then with the Iridium tier, it is a plus 50% bonus, putting it at 960 friendship points, which is just a little under 4 hearts of friendship, since each heart is valued at 250 friendship points. And in addition, with the friendship we got from the quests we completed for him, we should be at a good amount of friendship hearts with the wizard now. We will now head back to the farm where we do need to drop off our full inventory here, so let's skip over that. Then we will grab some coral so we can craft a warp totem beach. We will need that when we go for the night market festival later. And then we'll also check our dragon's teeth right here. We only have one but I do want to craft a warp totem to Ginger Island to get over there quickly, so we will spend it right now. I will have to grind for those later, because we will need 10 for the obelisk, but it shouldn't be too bad to grind. And the only reason I wanted to come here is because I'm concerned a little bit about something on the farm here. While we are here, we will grab a bunch of items to take back to the farm with us, but on the island farm here, there are some weeds down here. So I will go ahead and clear those because I'm afraid they might destroy my banana sapling there and I really don't want that to happen. So just to be safe, I am going to cut those weeds and then we'll bring back a bunch of items from our ginger island chest back to our main storage here on the regular farm. After skipping over some organization and grabbing some ingredients for seafoam pudding, we do head to the kitchen and craft a couple more seafoam pudding. We do have three now. I don't think we'll use all of them on our deep sea fishing tour, but we'll probably end up using at least one of those in combination with our wild bait as well. 
But before we even think about heading to the night market festival, we do need to tend to our starfruit wine kegs, and we will craft 49 more kegs with all that oak resin, and we do have enough wood, which is nice. And after we finish organizing our stuff and grabbing everything we need to bring with us, we'll head over to the bus stop area and start cycling the kegs. Right now, we do have 132 kegs, so adding 49 kegs to that will put us at a total of 181 kegs once we place those down. So we should be collecting 132 starfruit wine, and this will sell for 415,000 G, taking into account the artisan sell bonus, which we will, of course, pick up from the Statue of Uncertainty once we decide to sell all of our starfruit, probably at the end of this year. We'll probably do a big selling thing where we just sell a whole lot of our items, all of our starfruit wine, all of our extra starfruit that we didn't turn into wine, and pumpkins, and a bunch of other crops that we need to ship. We'll sell everything all at once and see how much money we can get at once. And then, once we place down our additional 49 kegs, we'll have a total of 181 kegs. So our next cycle of starfruit will net us 181 starfruit wine, which will sell for 570,000 G. We might not be able to afford the golden clock by the end of year one, but we should be able to afford all of the warp obelisks, which will be nice. And then for sure, before the end of year two spring, we'll be able to get the golden clock. Anyways, we have placed down all of the kegs now. We do have to fill them with the starfruit now, and there are some other kegs to cycle over there to the right. But once we finish this, we should be good to warp over to the beach for the night market festival. This did take a bit longer than I had planned for. It's already 6.30 p.m. and it would have been nice to get to the deep sea fishing tour at 5 p.m. Remember, once we get to the beach, we still have to give everybody gifts, which we will do now as we warp over. So we do have a beat for Alex, which is only a light gift. And then we'll have the pomegranate here for Elliot, who is all the way over there. And while we're here, of course, we'll pick up the painting. I will have to grab some quest money to be able to afford it. The painting does cost 1200 G, which isn't very much, but we do need 300 more. So 700 G is the cheapest option we have. So we'll go ahead and grab that. We still have about 450 G, although we do need 1000 G for the deep sea fishing tour. So I probably could have claimed a bit higher of a quest reward, but that's okay. It's all right if we pass out with a small amount of money, it'll only take 10%, which isn't much in the grand scheme of things. We do give a diamond to Jody, a loved gift, and then a cactus fruit to Sam, a loved gift, and then a beet to Evelyn, a loved gift, and then to George as well, just a light gift since he does love leeks, but we want to save whatever leeks we have to craft more spring seeds to plant when spring comes. Anyways, we do need to claim a quest reward like we predicted for the deep sea fishing tour, and then we can pay for it and head on down to the bottom of the ocean. I will be using the wild bait, which gives a one out of five chance at catching double fish per fish, and then I also equip the quality bobber, which will allow us to increase the quality of the fish. So say we catch a gold star, it would be an iridium quality fish instead. And we actually can. This does allow us to get iridium quality deep sea fish here. If we get a perfect catch, then it will be iridium now instead of gold. And the base will be gold, sort of like what it usually is when we're out fishing in deep water. And honestly, this deep sea fishing tour, min-max wise, money wise, really isn't worth it. The first one we did, of course, on day 15 was very necessary for perfection since we do need to catch every type of fish. But right now, this one is just sort of for fun because the night market only comes around for three days a year in winter. So I'd like to get some more of these fish, even though these fish aren't used in anything they aren't needed any quests or anything 
So I think I most likely decided to do it again just because I enjoyed it and like catching the fish. And they do sell for a bit more than most fish do, but ultimately not a whole lot of money. From the fish we end up catching today, we'll make about 12,000 G from it, although I probably won't even sell these fish right away. We might sell them at the end of the year with all the other stuff just to add a little bit of extra money on top of everything to see if we can get the biggest number we can. But anyway, we are going to be spending the rest of the night here, and I will pass out in the submarine, which will bring us to the end of this day and the end of this video. I know this video was a bit shorter since this day went pretty quick, but the next day we will be taking on Key's Skull Cavern Invasion Challenge once again, which will merit for a full video in itself, especially since tomorrow happens to be a super luck day, and we will be using two magic rock candies to try to collect as much radioactive ore and iridium ore and other loot as we can, so it should be a good one, and if you are looking forward to that and future videos, please consider subscribing so you can be sure to see the videos when they come out. Also, feel free to leave a comment with anything you'd like to share, and perhaps let me know if you have any suggestions for the year to farm layout and crop choices, as that will be coming up fairly soon, and I'm open to ideas. As always, thank you for watching, and goodbye.